SpaceX's Starship is getting closer to completion, and the industry has taken notice. Even though it may be a while until the Starship can perform a crewed mission, the craft could still be counted on to deliver cargo to orbit sooner than you think. Let's talk about the clients Starship has attracted so far, and what the massive craft's first ever orbital payload may be. SpaceX's Starship is gearing up for its third test flight heralding numerous milestones in its evolutionary path and bringing it one step closer to being fully operational. As we eagerly await the readiness of this colossal rocket, we anticipate witnessing its remarkable capabilities unfold in missions covered by signed commercial contracts. Among these contracts is an intriguing partnership with Japan's Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation, a notable player in the domain of multi-channel satellite information and paid television in Asia. The agreement, solidified on August 19, 2022, involves the launch of the Superbird 9 geostationary orbit communication satellite. Following the success of IFT-2, SpaceX is gearing up to elevate its giant rocket to the next level with the second-generation Starship. This iteration features an increased payload capacity, achieved by incorporating more propellant to reduce mass and enhance overall reliability. Enthusiastic SpaceX supporters are hopeful to witness this upgraded version, particularly anticipating its potential role in carrying the company's inaugural payload, Superbird 9, into geostationary transfer orbit, GTO. It's worth noting that JSAT isn't the first company to contemplate using Starship for launching satellites for commercial purposes. However, they stand out as the trailblazers by becoming the first customer to solidify their intent with a firm contract. The successful execution of this contract is expected to set the stage for subsequent ventures, including the notable Dear Moon project. The Dear Moon project, conceived and financed by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maizawa, represents a groundbreaking initiative in lunar tourism and art. This venture will leverage a SpaceX Starship spacecraft on a private spaceflight, navigating a single circumlunar trajectory around the moon. In May 2019, Gwyn Shotwell, the president and COO of SpaceX, casually mentioned the upcoming launch of Turkey's second domestically built communication satellite. Despite her informal disclosure, no official agreement has materialized as of yet. Moving on to 2021, SpaceX submitted a bid for launching NASA's tiny TROPICS weather satellite constellation using its Starship. This constellation, weighing approximately 56 kilograms, 124 pounds, came with a proposed price ranging between $9 million to $20 million. Adding to SpaceX's roster in August 2022, the second Bluebird satellite launch contract was disclosed. This contract was established with AST Spacemobile, a startup focused on creating a mobile-friendly internet constellation. Notably, Superbird 9, set to enter service in 2027, has experienced a delay from its initially planned 2024 operations. The official reason for this postponement is attributed to the delays in both the Starship and the satellite itself. Following the explosion in the first test in April of this year, SpaceX's Starship second test flight encountered a seven-month delay imposed by the FAA due to environmental concerns. This setback presented a challenging situation for SpaceX, as the postponement of IFT-2 had a cascading effect on subsequent programs, particularly impacting NASA's Artemis III mission. According to the latest report from the United States Government Accountability Office, the initial crewed landing of the Artemis Lunar Exploration Initiative is now unlikely to occur before 2027. In response, Elon Musk's company is diligently working on advancing progress toward IFT-3, which includes a crucial propellant transfer demonstration integral to the Artemis program. Simultaneously, SpaceX faces the imperative task of bolstering confidence in Starship by initiating launches with its own products or Starlink satellites before venturing into customer payloads. This strategy aligns with Elon Musk's statement during the International Astronautical Congress 2023 event, where he addressed the timeline for deploying Starlink satellites using Starship. Musk expressed optimism, stating, I think there's a good chance we start deploying Starlink V3 satellites next year, roughly a year from now. The mention of V3 Starlink satellites in the statement marks a noteworthy revelation from SpaceX, indicating the company's readiness to implement upgrades to its space-based internet network. This strategic move aligns with the customary challenges associated with early flights on a new rocket. A historical example is SpaceX's inaugural Falcon 1, launched from the United States military's Ronald Reagan ballistic missile test site at the Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Ocean's Marshall Islands. During the Falcon 1 launch, moments after ignition, the webcast video displayed a rolling motion, 
and the feed was subsequently lost. Details regarding potential causes for the rocket's failure were not immediately available. Presently, SpaceX possesses its own Starlink payloads, allowing the company to take calculated risks without jeopardizing external customer payloads. In the event of success, SpaceX gains value from the extended lifetime of those Starlink satellites, as opposed to a singular discounted launch payment from a customer. As SpaceX continues to achieve success with consecutive flights, the dynamics might evolve. Once Starship demonstrates consistent reliability in reaching its orbital targets, there may be a shift in the approach, potentially allowing for more diverse and external payloads. An additional consideration is that, to date, SpaceX has exclusively developed cargo doors for the flat Starlink satellites. While addressing this issue will eventually become necessary, it doesn't currently appear to be the top priority for SpaceX. The company is currently engaged with tasks such as HLS lander, refueling tankers, and Starlink launches. Despite the numerous challenges leading to shifts in Starship's timeline and affecting associated missions, SKY Perfect JSAT continues to express confidence in SpaceX's Starship project. This steadfast support underscores the immense potential that this colossal rocket holds for future customers. First and foremost, Starship boasts unique features that hold considerable promise for satellite operators. The expansive 9-meter-wide fairing and virtually limitless payload capacity open up new possibilities for satellite designs. This includes the potential for larger antennas, solar panels, or sensors, allowing satellite operators to significantly enhance the capital efficiency of their satellite projects. The generous fairing size also streamlines satellite architecture, reducing the reliance on deployable structures, and minimizing the need for costly miniaturization, a historical hallmark of satellite design. Consequently, operators can explore the development of bulkier, less complex, and easier to manufacture satellites. In addition to offering superior capacity and volume, SpaceX has emphasized a substantial reduction in launch costs, potentially leading to lower launch prices. This cost reduction is attributed to the full reusability of all Starship elements. With each component being reused in multiple launches, manufacturing costs per launch could become negligible, with the primary additional expenses being associated with fuel and operational aspects. Elon Musk has highlighted a remarkable launch cost of $100 per kilogram, achievable through numerous reuses of Starship. This stands in stark contrast to approximately $2,300 per kilogram on Falcon Heavy at full capacity and a $6,000 per kilogram entry price on transporter ride shares. Starship not only promises cost effectiveness, but also introduces the potential for rapid Constellation batch deployment. Large constellations are particularly interested in swiftly deploying their satellites to initiate operations promptly. Leveraging its substantial capacity, Starship could theoretically deploy entire constellations in just a few launches. This involves reigniting engines multiple times to reach various inclinations in a single launch, an essential capability for SpaceX's broadband revenue model. This model relies on the rapid deployment and replenishment of the heavier second generation of Starlink satellites, each weighing an estimated 1,200 kilograms compared to 200 kilograms for the first generation. According to SpaceX, Starship could deploy over 52 second generation Starlink satellites per launch. Additionally, Starship could potentially address the small satellite rideshare launch market as a complementary option. While its capacity might be considered overkill for this market, filling Falcon 9 transporter flights can take up to a year due to scattered small sat demand and low fill rates. Starship's full reusability may enable it to launch economically even with a very low fill rate, given that all elements are reused regardless. While the small satellite rideshare launch market may be a lower priority for Starship in the near future, there are numerous compelling propositions that leverage Starship's unprecedented dimensions. One noteworthy application is the ability to launch entire space stations as single modules, eliminating the need for in-space assembly. Additionally, SpaceX could potentially compete in this domain by repurposing a Starship upper stage into a space station itself. Configured for future crewed missions, it could offer a pressurized volume comparable to the International Space Station. Beyond space stations, Starship's colossal size makes it an ideal candidate for serving as the structural foundation for large space telescopes. Furthermore, it could function as a refueling station for spacecraft in space, a capability crucial for NASA's Artemis missions. This is particularly relevant for ambitious active debris removal solutions and various other applications. While there are several applications the Starship can be used in, there is no set timeline on when the craft will be ready. 
Do you think SpaceX can launch the Starship's first cargo delivery mission within a year?